Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here, and we are back today talking more about Super Heavy Samurai. Now that his post-duelist Nexus Revolution Synchron has been released, first off, we can play way less bricks because we don't need to play Deng Long anymore. So that's immediately three less bricks out of the deck and one less extra deck space. I also believe we don't need to play Infinite Track Tunneler anymore. You could still side deck it if you feel like you need the recovery play, but if your your first turn will be so significant, so significantly stacked against your opponent if you pull the combo off, you don't really need the follow up, but you can keep it around. I mean, it's it's purely up to you. Honestly, I want to find a deck that doesn't need to play box in general. I'm starting to think maybe if there's a route where we can get to beyond the pendulum without using Ancient Gear Ballista, that would be great, but the utility this card provides us is just unmatched. It it still is one of the best cards in the deck, like, hands down, so. Especially when you mix it with a Soul Piercer. Like, if you can make Ballista with a Soul Piercer, it's, like, plus three. I'm still on Gamma, personally, just because I do still think Hand Traps are a big deal, uh, Shifter still a big deal, Droll still a big deal, and if you're going first, you don't want to deal with any of those cards. So you drop that bike, or you activate that Prodigy Wakashi, and I want to make sure that it resolves. Nobody expects Gamma this format, so I sort of just keep it in just in case. And Gamma can make the Visus Amritara, or it can make Excel Synchro, so now you have more options compared to before. Let me just give you guys a showcase of how the deck works. Just know that this... This side deck is like a work in progress. I play Zeus and Baguska when I know I'm going to go second, and I play Crimson Dragon and Hot Red. These these are supposed to be in the side deck because this is only this is purely a going first combo. When you're not going first, you should side these two out, or I, I think you should side these three out. Like I think you also side out the the Steam Train King um, and put in uh, these three or four to balance it out for going first or going second but if you know you're going first i feel like having these in in your extra deck will be the optimal way to play the deck first off showing you the potential of what revolution synchron can do so revolution synchron if you don't know what it does it uses itself as synchro material from hand so you normal summon soul piercer plus revolution synchron you get to instantly make any level 7 dragon synchro or a power tool from there, your Soul Piercer can search you any Super Heavy Samurai monster, meaning you get to search Bike, and you get to start the main combo of going into Wakashi, and this, that, and the third. And then, Revolution Synchron gets to revive itself because you have a level 7 or higher Synchro monster on board, but it becomes level 1. The catch to that is that you have to mill one card from the top of your deck. So, if you saw the deck list, you saw we were playing a lot of two ofs. And that was the reason. We don't want to mill anything that is essential to our combo if we can help it. It's still level 3 right now, but it's going to go down to level 1. And now that it was level 1, we used it to make a uh, Crystal Wing. And then once we have the protection with Crystal Wing, Bike and Wakashi and all that, it basically gets to be resolved untouched. Unless they have Imperm. It's just protection against Nibiru, Ash, Blossom, Veiler, whatever it is they might have. Ash or Veiler before we made this Crystal Wing. Because the only thing that we did was summon Moonlight and then use Moonlight to go into Revolution Synchron. I mean, and then use Revolution Synchron to go into Crystal Wing. So they should still be holding their hand traps. The only one that they could have resolved before this, Droll. But if you already open Bike or if you already open Wakashi, you don't need to resolve Soul Piercer. So you, if you think they're holding a Droll, you don't need to resolve Soul Piercer here. You can just go straight into Crystal Wing and then uh, activate your Bike. So go Wakashi, Wakashi effect, place, and by this point, you know, nothing, this is sort of nothing new, get the Soul Piercer, go plus two with the scales, and then link off, Ballista, go plus three, um, and yeah, we search Wagon here, because we're going to, we're setting up for a Pendulum Summon, Wagon effect, add... Gaia Booster, Gaia Booster Equip, Gaia Booster Effects. We make Merry Maker, Sargus, Sargus Effects, Search Regulus, Excel Synchro, Get Bike, Baron. Now, I did mill the second Regulus here, which this is the preferred card that you should um, take if you ever happen to have Regulus in hand. 
but uh, this is a hypothetical two card combo and there's no guarantee that you're milling the second regulus so that's that's the reason why I didn't go for regulus here also because Baron can pop your own soul piercer get you an extra search um, which is going to allow us to make our uh, Apo. Now, this board loses to Dark Ruler, it loses to Super Poly, it loses to a lot of things, and this isn't the foolproof um, Super Heavy Samurai board that you can make, but this is purely just showing you what you can get off of Revolution Synchron by itself. Revolution Synchron plus Soul Piercer increases the ceiling of the deck, right? Because now you have one extra negate on top of these. If they don't open a board breaker, like, there's no way they're getting past this, right? So, that's the, um, the, the, the great part about playing Revolution Synchron. So, now, I'm going to show you, like, to make sure that you're invulnerable to nib, um, I, I have this second Revolution Synchron combo. And this time, we hard open the Regulus, so we're not going to search it. We're, we, we already have it in hand. That's why we're playing it at two. You could even play it at three if you wanted, but I don't think it's that good of a card to play at three in the deck because it does conflict with some combos if you use it too early. Like, okay, so we ended up milling the second Soul Piercer, which, again, pure luck, right? Um... But let's say we only have one Soul Piercer and one Revolution Synchron in our grave when we made this Ancient Fairy Dragon. You could not use either of them to get Regulus because Revolution Synchron still needs to summon itself back. So you wouldn't want to target that. And Soul Piercer, you still, have, um, you, you still haven't summoned Scales yet. So you don't want to use your Soul Piercer in grave preemptively and lower your ceiling by equipping it to Regulus. Now we're making Visa's Emertara, and the reason why we can do that is because our non-tuner monster here was a light. And the great thing about Revolution Synchron is, although the hand effect specifies dragons or power tool, when using the second effect and reviving it as a level one tuner, you can make any synchro. Like, you're no longer restricted to only making dragons, you can make any synchro in the game. So that's why I think Ancient Fairy is a nice touch, because if you're going first, Ancient Fairy can summon any monster, any level 4 lower monster from your hand, which in Super Heavy Samurai seems like a pretty big deal. Like, if you have an extra Soul Piercer in hand, that could be the difference between you getting an extra combo piece on board or not. And then you get to summon out Revolution Synchron from your graveyard and use it and Ancient Fairy to make Visus Emeritara. And the reason why this Visus is so significant is because it searches Manadium Reframing. We held the Regulus here because we just needed to make this card just to search Reframing. Reframing is how we, we protect ourselves from Dark Ruler No More. We aren't necessarily super polymerization proof, but Dark Ruler No More and Evenly and Droplet and those unresponsible board breakers, re reframing deals with like most of them. It's better to have the counter trap and not need it than to not have the counter trap and need it. We've gone up to five summons here, I believe. Wait, no, that's one, two, three. That's four. Four, four is uh, Visus. So we, we've actually done four summons to make Visus here, and our fifth summon will be Regulus. And we're going to target the Revolution Synchron. Now we can't use its graveyard effect. Now we can equip it to Regulus safely, and we're on five summons. We may still only have one negate here, but one, it's a more generic negate. It can, it can negate anything, um, including Imperm. And two, we have Visus Emeritara, which will actually come up later on in the combo when you're trying to make a certain someone you guys will see in a second. So Wakashi, Wakashi, get Big Benke, Big Benke, get you Peacemaker, and again we're doing the same same line. Scales, scales, soul piercer. Go ballista, ballista plus soul piercer, you plus three, wagon, box, box effect, add coral, general coral, now you get a pen for three. Box, Wakashi, wagon, wagon, add your Gaia booster. And we just made the Crimson Dragon using Emeritarian Box because this thing's just a level 8 tuner. It becomes, it makes it so much easier to make this generic level 12 monster when you have a level 8 tuner compared to when you have to make it using some of your level 4s. 
Now, next, we go into Super Heavy Samurai Steam Train King. And the reason why we go into this guy is because he is a level 12 synchro. Um, that also has so much utility that it's kind of crazy. So, we, we pass turn and we're only ending on two negates here. The, the Counter Trap and Regulus, but there's actually more to this combo because you get to use the Crimson Dragon effect to make Hot Red Dragon uh, Archfiend King Calamity. And so the reason why you want to make this card is because it's basically like the next Utopic Zexal, um, the next your opponent cannot play this turn kind of card, um, like number 86. So when this card is Synchro Summoned, you, for the rest of your turn, your opponent cannot activate cards and cards your opponent controls cannot activate their effects, meaning they can still summon, they just can't use any effects um, on field, nor can they activate spells or traps from hand for the turn. And your opponent cannot respond to his effect, so once Crimson Dragon resolves, you're set. Now, Crimson Dragon, using it during your opponent's turn, they can respond with Droplets or Chalice or something, but that's where the reframing comes in and sort of gives you that extra layer of protection against any sort of interruption that your opponent may have. Um, in stopping Crimson Dragons. That's why it's really significant. Also, because we don't have Baron on our field, we don't lose the Super Poly here, whereas a lot of decks will lose the Super Poly because Crimson Dragon plus Baron equals Draco Knight Draco e e e Equist, or Equest, however you pronounce it. But because we don't have Baron or any Warrior Monster on our field, we have purely Machines, we don't lose to, <laughs> to uh, Super Poly, meaning uh, it's Droplet or nothing. Like, it's Droplet, Chalice, Imperm, or... I mean, if it's Chalice or Imperm, we, we have the Regulus right here. And, yeah, they're they're basically screwed. And you're, you're going to see in a second why. All right, so Calamity goes off. Now, cool interaction is that Revolution Synchron actually plays around Calamity in, in its own way. Because you can still use its effect to Synchro Summon. You can also still use effects in Graveyard and in Hand. Meaning, you can still somewhat make a board under Calamity. Like, look at this. Like, he's kind of making plays, even though I locked him under uh, Archfiend King Calamity. And that, that's sort of something I, I, um, that we're going to talk a little more about later. But we can at least make a Crystal Wing and get some follow-up for next turn. Uh, Crystal Wing attack Regulus, you know, attack Ballista, sure. It's, it's great now because now that we've passed turn, Regulus has a negate to... We we made two negates under a card that says we cannot activate cards this turn. It doesn't necessarily stop. It stops a lot. Don't get me wrong. If, if this was any other deck besides Super Heavy, if this was like a deck where you drew like five spell cards like Runic or something, you'd just be forced to, to set five and pass turn. But because this is a super heavy samurai deck it sort of gives you a little more um, versatility in how you can approach a board like this it's kind of cool now i wanted to give a sort of turn three scenario i know we just drew soul piercer again kind of stacked but uh just bear with me here so we're gonna pendulum summon so we negated the big ben k and the reason why i didn't activate reframing here is because we still have game we still have game on board even with the regular negate, so I'm not going to waste my counter trap on something that is not very significant. How do we still have game? Well, I'm about to show you right now. So we get Crystal Wing negate on the Soul Piercer. Now, so we chain blocked the Excel Synchro so that Crystal Wing couldn't get play around it. Uh, basically, if we destroy a monster by battle, Coral lets Steam Train King attack twice meaning uh, 48 plus 4k. You just took uh, 8,800 points of damage, and there's not much you could do about that. So, that would be game. Let's go through some of the potential of just Crimson Dragon by itself. Uh, again, same opening. I know it's like this, this is not a very versatile combo video. It's more just showing you the ceiling. And then once we figure out what the ceiling is, then we could work our way outwards like with you know last combo featured regulus so i feel like it was a little more significant but this time we're on complete copium hoping they have no hand traps at all 
because if they have a single hand trap, like all all of this gets interrupted. That's why um, we had Regulus in the last combo. I think playing Regulus as a three of might actually be the way. Um, now that I'm think, now that I'm looking back at this, is like we just made the exact same board without Regulus. Because unfortunately, um, we could, like. If we were playing the other Super Heavy Samurai Synchro, we could, there could be a world where we resolve Wakashi effect to summon a Super Heavy Samurai from deck, and then just be locked into Super Heavy for the rest of the turn so that we can make both Steam Train King plus Brave, Brave Musuro or, you know, something of that nature. But because we're not doing all that and we're purely showing, like, what the deck can do, um, we're just going to Steam Train King. But I think if you could save the this, this Steam Train King play for turn three, I feel like that would be way more significant. Anyway, um, we made Archwing King Calamity again, and uh, they kind of bricked, right? They, they drew their driver, they drew their Revolution Synchron. But as I said before, they're still making plays. Um, not as crazy as it was last time, but. Now, giving you guys a more realistic turn three, right? So now we're using the reframing on the crystal wing. Now, when you use reframing, unless you could currently control the visa synchro, it doesn't actually destroy the card that activated. It just negates. So... Uh, just be really careful about that. Like it, it's kind of like a regulus, but as a counter trap, while you control any synchro, which is great, right? Don't get me wrong, that's amazing. But just you know, keep in mind that it won't fucking um, get rid of everything. It'll just or it won't get rid of the card it, it negated. It'll just negate the card. So, but basically because of calamity you get to steamroll your opponent turn three like most most likely unless they're playing a heavy amounts of back row they won't have much response to you being able to pendulum summon wakashi search soul piercer go into excel they won't have much of a response to this um maybe if they've set their super poly they could get rid of these two but you still have three full ass monsters on board that can do a lot of damage even through super poly and you have so much extension that like i don't think it'll matter also because we're playing the same train king with reframing you can banish um you can banish reframing from your graveyard uh to inflict 200 damage to your opponent so that you're not um locking yourself out of resolving some of your super heavy samurai effects which is great as well so it sort of like all comes together when you're focusing your build around crimson dragon because you get a cool counter trap that you have an easy way to play around um or an easy way to get rid of from the graveyard once you, once you've already used it then spy gets to summon itself out now this is when I was on Big Ben K. I took Big Ben K out of the build, but um, if you're on Monk Warrior Big Ben K, then or if if you if you play more than one Monk Warrior, I think it, it doesn't hurt to play the regular Big Ben K. It's just one more brick, but I want to take as many bricks out the deck as possible. I want this to be a consistent combo. You didn't have to summon Big Ben K here. It was still game regardless. But and now I want to show you guys a replay of what if my opponent has like a, a cool board breaker you know like do you still lose to it like curry Kara? and personally i think the answer is no i think there are some board breakers that just don't do enough because if you consider the sequencing of the combo
And again, this is assuming they open only board breakers and no hand traps. Which might actually be a possibility of this format because um, although Ash and Permanent Veiler are still good, it's like a lot of people are moving towards, because of Revolution Synchron, it's better to just play board breakers because why would you waste your one hand trap on something that, like when it could get eaten by like a Crystal Wing Negate or like a Regulus Negate or a Baron Negate when you could just play a board breaker and get rid of like half their field at once. Manadium combo is way stronger than what this can produce. And it can produce like two, three um, negates on board on top of, like it, it's like the first combo I showed. That's basically what Manadium can do consistently. So why not just go into, so why not just play the Super Poly just to break the board a lot easier? To get to potentially get rid of Apo and Baron at the same time. To potentially get rid of Crimson Dragon and Baron at the same time, you know? Like, there's a lot of ways you can use Super Poly against Synchro decks this format. So I think more people are going to be on Board Breakers. Um, Lava Golem, Kaijus, Dark Ruler, Droplets. So I just wanted to give one... One example of how to beat Kurikara, um, now that I'm saying all this out loud, I should have shown um, how this deck plays against every board breaker, but I wanted to just show Kurikara the most because Kurikara is like, it was really big last format because it beat Kashtira sort of like without even trying. Whereas in this one, you can tribute Calamity off rip because it resolves during your opponent's turn, so they can just tribute off Calamity. But even then, it'll only have 3k, and unless they can bait another negate, it won't be doing much. Like, if you mix this with Apo, and they could, you know, bait out the Apo, then Curry Car could have 4,500. But even then, you still have Steam Train King, and Curry Car won't be able to resolve its end phase effect because of King Calamity. King Calamity is going to stop it from being able to resolve any of its actual effects. It, all, it, all it gets is the built-in summon to tribute your opponent's monsters. You don't auto lose this card, but at the same time, it is something that you should be looking out for um, and trying to play around. That's why I held some of my negates um, in some of those last few matches, because you want to play around cards like this. You don't have to worry about triple tactics if King Calamity resolves, but Curry Car is probably one of the most dangerous ones if it resolves, because not only can she get rid of your monsters, but she can put a pretty big body on your opponent's field, where um, they could swing over your Ballista, so Ballista would have been your one way to get it down to, like, or to swing over it, but they can easily swing over Ballista if, if you happen to leave it on board. So, if they have any way to play around your Steam Train King, then they could potentially have a 4,500 monster that you will not be able to swing over. Uh, which is kind of uh, which is kind of crazy. On top of them having this crystal wing negate, which doesn't do much against super heavy samurai combo because again you can uh, chain block the um, Excel synchro when you're using soul piercer, and you can also and once you go into that you can make Baron and Baron just hard beats crystal wing because you pop it. Is forced to use its you you target it for destruction. Is forced to use its effect. You negate with Baron, cleared. You know, like there's there's almost no situation where Crystal Wing beats Baron. So that's why um, they wasted their Crystal Wing negate here because they knew that once the Baron once Baron hit the board, this card was gone anyway. So why why not just stop your opponent from going plus one? I mean, and even then. Steam Train King hit over Curry Kara. Even if they took like two to three hundred points of damage with Coral on board, this is still game because they take the two hundred, they take another forty eight hundred directly, plus three thousand. That's still eighty one hundred, assuming Curry Kara was at forty five hundred attack points. Um, which is way more than game. <laughs> so that's the potential of the. Super Heavy Samurai deck with Crimson Dragon. And again, these two are really only for going first. Like, if you know you're going first, then you keep these two in. If not, you side these guys out and you put in your Baguska, your Zeus, your Genius, 
Uh, you can even take out like Ancient Fairy or Moonlight, wh whichever you, you prefer to take out. Like Moonlight's great for going second. Ancient Fairy's great if you know you're going first. Steam Train King's great for getting rid of your reframing. Um, and I think you should still be playing Vesis because you can make it with Driver and Gamma. And potentially, if you open the Regulus, you can make the Emritara without having to go into Crimson Dragon. So you can play more of a typical Super Heavy Samurai build. The reason why we kept in Gigant X and it's not being cited out is because this is potentially a starter if you only open Wagon. So if you only open Wagon, then it searches Gaia Booster, Gaia Booster plus Wagon equals a rank 4, then you can start your combo off from there, search search Bike or search Wakashi, depending on your situation. There's a lot of times I was playtesting this deck, and I was not opening one of my fucking 12 starters, which is very frustrating. So I wanted to make sure that like I have at least one way to make Wagon a pretty consistent starter. Even if it's not the best one, at least it could do something if it resolves. That's sort of the theory behind this deck. Um, Tilting Entrainment's great when you open something that like doesn't make sense. Like if you open like Piercer plus any of the extenders like Claw or Soul Horns, then that's when you go Ballista, get Wakashi, get Box, get Coral. Then you go into Tilting and Training later on in the line to get that combo extension. But I think this card is... Like, there might be a world where we don't need to play this card anymore. But I think for the time being, we should still play it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, how, how do you guys like Revolution Sync Run in this deck? Do you think this deck has any chance of being successful do you think it's still copium to play super heavy post and post june ban list do we we definitely still need scarecrow back but opening or is playing the deck as it is now enough is it good enough to compete i'll see you guys on the next one peace